This has been something that's been on the radar of Health Secretary Robert Kennedy Jr. for quite a long time. He really has been working towards the goal of reducing the number of vaccines that are recommended for all children in the United States. And yesterday, boom, they dropped this new document saying that they had unilaterally decided on a new childhood vaccination schedule for kids in the United States. Got us stress off the top how unprecedented this is, you know, for several political appointees working within the secretary's office to come up with a new schedule instead of the scientists who work at the CDC working with an expert panel. It's just not the way this kind of thing is normally done, but this is the world we're living in now. It's jaw-dropping for people who work in this field. You know, there are lots and lots of things that kids don't suffer from these days because of vaccines. Well, I think one of the things that's important to point out is that what they derived is this sort of core schedule of 11 pathogens that they recommend that all kids be vaccinated against. And then there are a bunch of others that are currently on the schedule that they say should either be targeted only at high-risk kids. And, you know, one thing experts will tell you is that if it was easy to figure out who the high-risk kids were, the program probably would be doing that already. If they recommend something universally, it's probably because it's not abundantly clear how to identify the kids who are at risk. And then there are some vaccines that they have suggested should fall into a category where of what they call shared decision-making, where rather than recommending it for everybody, parents should discuss with a pediatrician or other healthcare provider whether or not to get their children that vaccine. So, you know, it's going to create a two or three tiered schedule and it's going to create mass confusion and backlogs in pediatricians' offices and confusion amongst parents about which vaccines their children should and shouldn't be getting. I should point out that, you know, professional groups like the American Academy of Pediatrics are not on board with this and they are recommending to the members, their members, that they continue to use the old schedule. So you're going to have advice from different organizations going in different directions. And, you know, it's, it's hard to see how this will create chaos. And I was talking yesterday to the head of the Division of Vaccines and Biologics at the World Health Organization, who is uh, an American who had been at Johns Hopkins before she went to WHO. She said she can think of no previous precedent for a country making such a radical change to it, its schedule. Certainly countries have on occasion, and the U.S. is among them, removed recommendations for vaccines in the past when there has been data showing that the vaccine posed a risk. You know, there hasn't been a presentation of lots of data that shows that getting these childhood vaccines is a risk. It's that Secretary Kennedy and the people who work for him and share his views have argued that, you know, giving too many vaccines may undermine parents' willingness to vaccinate against important diseases and may undermine, you know, maybe fueling vaccine hesitancy. So they think that by lowering the numbers, they may get vaccine rates up for the core vaccines. But there's no data, you know. Over the years, the sort of enterprise of developing and implementing use of vaccines has been working towards trying to eliminate illnesses that can be prevented. It's an additive process. It has been an additive process. Scientists have found ways to prevent these preventable illnesses in children. And to have these tools effectively set aside is really kind of startling. I will say that, you know, in their statement about their plan, you know, the, the implication is that those vaccines will be available to parents who want to vaccinate their children. But this kind of a thing could undermine confidence in those products. Also, it's not currently clear whether they'll be covered by private insurance going forward. At the moment, you know, in the statement yesterday, HHS said that um, they will be covered by CMS and by the Vaccines for Children program. But it's, you know, private insurers, it's not clear. What they have said so far is that there will be no change in 
until later in 2026. There's no decision at this, this current time, let's put it that way, to change anything. The question remains, will they continue to pick up the cost of vaccines that don't sort of fall under this recommended for everybody schedule?